The same thing happened with Jesus. Now it, it, it will happen for us. Our, our people, it means our people, our nationality, a Syrian, this is the reason we are suffering before. And another, another reason is our religion, because we are Christian. All Christian is unlike here in Iraq, because most of people in Iraq are Muslim. If you ask me what is going on in Iraq and what the Christian community in Iraq has endured, there's a lot of gruesome stories needs to be told. One of them, for, for instance, is a widow that her husband was killed, and here her son was kidnapped, and she was asked for a ransom. They demanded the ransom. She couldn't come up with the ransom. It's a habit in Iraq. And when you uh, provide a meal, you put on, uh, you, you serve it in a, a big dish of rice, and on the top of the rice, the pieces of meat. What the what the uh, 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 the fanatics and the fundamentalists do is they took the child, they chopped his head, they put him on the top of the rice, and here uh, here we go. They bring it to the to the mother, and this is here is here's your dish now. Like 2003, when the government in Iraq, they move it. Yeah, my husband, he has a small store, very, very small. And like, you know, the Muslim people, they come into his store, they shoot him, like three shots, and they kill him right away. And be here. My daughter, she called me, like, five o'clock in the morning. Just, I'm here, somebody crying. Somebody came into my daughter's house. They put you know, the mask in the face, and we have the um, shotgun. Yeah. They tried to um, you know, ring the door, and then they tell her, if you don't open the door, they want to shoot under the door to open it. She's scared she opened the door. Yeah. On the first time they came in, the, you know, the, um, the reason they came in her house, they want to find um, her husband, because her husband, he have tattooed like, the cross in the arm. They try to do it my, with my daughter. They try to do sex with her, but she pregnant. That time she pregnant two months. Yeah, and they try um do sex with her, but she don't tell me do or not. But I know they hit her, hit my daughter in the um shotgun. They hit her in the head, in the stomach, in her back, and then that about maybe. One hour, two hours, and she um, lost the baby. They take her to the hospital. The thing that is most unique about the current persecutions in Iraq is the individual level of violence. How can people take six-month-old baby and roast him and serve him to his mother. It is barbaric. We were quite surprised uh, to see a very high percentage of those who have suffered direct violence. They don't flee because they, they heard a bullet or they heard a bomb, etc. They've been directly affected by violence. We, about 16% of those who have registered with us had suffered torture. 
and uh, I don't want to drown you with percentage, but you know, as an average, between 70 and 80 percent have been uh, have seen uh, uh, bombings. They've seen bits of bodies flying all around the place. They've seen killings. Um, about 50 percent have received uh, death threats uh, themselves. And a very very high percentage have been victims of. Um, uh, or one of their uh, relatives had been victim of uh, abductions uh, for ransom. My father was kidnapped in, uh, Mar in April, uh, 8th in April. So it's one year. Yani. We don't know where he is or did he still alive? They released her husband to go to bring money, and they left, left uh, with them the, her, her son. Every day they speak with them and uh, tell them to give us money. If you don't give us, we will kill you. The Christian people here, they sacrifice everything but to keep the faith, as I mentioned. But here in uh, generally speaking in Iraq, this, the Christian people suffered the most. The church, a place of, of um, prayer for people, regardless what religion they are, is uh, a very holy place. If you touch that, you're touching them deep in their thoughts. And this will bring people to think twice. Should we stay or should we leave? Should we build back? Maybe it will be bombarded again. Do we leave the country? These are the questions that goes up on the heads of the people when they see the house of God are destroyed. Aramaic people, the Chaldean Assyrian people, they accepted Christianity easily because the missionaries, they spoke the same language. Jesus spoke Aramaic. Our people spoke the Aramaic language. It was easy for them to uh, accept Christianity because of the language. First century, beginning of the second century to the third century, we had uh, a lot of churches um, in Persian Empire, in Iraq, basically. And uh, Christianity became stronger until the seventh century when Islam came to the region. When I first went to the Middle East in November 2006 to look at the situation of displaced Iraqis, I was overwhelmed by the extent of the crisis, the numbers, the scope, and the fact that it was now a regional crisis with refugees throughout the region, but also displaced Iraqis inside Iraq. Um, when I came back to the U.S. Uh, in December of 2006 and talked to the State Department about the growing humanitarian crisis, what I got in return was basically a denial over the existence of the crisis. There were no Iraqi refugees, they told me. These people were guests or tourists.
خطب ابني انا خطب ابني اخذت 30 الف دولار خلصت من الخطب لانه يعني خلوا المسدس على حلق قلت اسلم لو نقتلك هاي واحد Whether you pay thirty thousand or we will shoot your son, so she, she was forced to pay thirty thousand to save her son, and then they run away. خطأ في أخوي. They kidnap his brother. And paid more than two hundred fifty thousand dollar. After that, they kill him. After they get the money, they kill him also. I have one question. When we were in Iraq, we were in the middle of the war. Among them, there was a rape. بعد ما دفعنا فلوس اعطونا اياها خلصنا قالوا لنا اذا تبدون سلامتكم ترجعون طلعوا من العراق فصرنا قدامه من الواقع طلعنا من العراق فهنا الحمد لله والشكر قبلونا اليو ورا ما قبلونا اليو ان الرفض مالتنا شنو هو؟ ليش دفعنا فلوس هذا قانون جديد بالكونغرس الامريكي ما اعرف ليش دفعتوا فلوس؟ ليش دفعتوا فلوس؟ تجوز هذه الفلوس ذهبت الى منظمات ارهابيه زين هل من الممكن او بنتي تنقتل يجوز اذا كان الرجال راح يبني فيها كنيسه؟ so basically, the material support problem, which we refer to it here as in Washington, in Washington um, stems from provisions, the overly broad application of particular provisions in the 2001 USA Patriot Act. But we have people who have provided support, so-called support under duress. The best example of that would be um, you know, an Iraqi family who provided funds to um, a group of people, kidnapped a loved one, and attempted to provide funds to that group in order to secure the release of their loved one. Under our U.S. law, such a person is inadmissible to the U.S. because such an act is considered support to a terrorist organization, even under duress, even at gunpoint, even if the support was as minimal as a dollar. And so in uh, community after community, home after home, business after business, uh, there is a note left, uh, a telephone call made, uh, all threats. If you do not leave, if you, you are not gone by a week from today or by tomorrow morning, uh, your family or your children will be, uh, will be killed, your home will be burned down, et cetera, et cetera. And so what people have done is to try and bring some reason to this, to save their children's lives, or to uh, stand up for the priest who is the pastor of their church by saying, look, um, uh, if we give you some money, just go away, please, because this is, this is our home, this is our community, uh, and not wanting to be uprooted. Now, you want to take that kind of a scenario and say, uh, well, then they're terrorists for doing this, that's a form of madness in and of itself. My husband was speaking with him in the phone. And uh, it was a very difficult time for us because uh, my husband who was talking with him in the phone uh, about the ransom and uh, what they did from us. Why, why you did this with us? It was a difficult time, very difficult time for us. Then uh, they, take, they took from us, from my husband, $10,000 to, to just uh, take him alive. When you look at the tens of millions of people that comprise the country of Iraq, uh, Christians are a very, very, very small percentage. And out of that small percentage, there are so many that have fled. That's A. B, I think that uh, given that, uh, that in our talks with the Iraqi government, we have to keep bringing up uh, the Iraqi Christians so that we place it on their radar screen. When I visited Iraq and raised this uh, with the leadership there, uh, they gave a very, very weak, weak response. My brother was kidnapped too. Thank God he came back. But there is 
hundreds and thousands of people that were kidnapped, their ransom was paid, and they never came back. We have also established with Anna Eshu a, a Christian, Iraqi Christian, but Christian minority caucus for the Middle East, Christian and Baha'i and other minorities, because the Christians and other minorities in the Middle East are having a very difficult time. Coptic Christians have a very difficult time in Egypt. Uh, the Baha'is having a very difficult time in Iran. Uh, the Assyrian Chaldeans having a very difficult time and other Christians in, in Iraq. And to sort of force the, our government, but also other Christians around the world. I mean, where has the church been on this issue? I would still consider that Jordan and Syria have been extremely welcoming towards these, uh, these refugees. Things might change now, in particular as the, uh, the means that the refugees had to survive, which is very much uh, savings they had brought with them, or remittances they get back from Iraq. Uh, all these are drying up, and therefore uh, their living conditions are becoming more difficult. We are illegal here. We are illegal in Jordan. We want to build our future. We want to, to go to another country. We can't return, we can't, uh, return uh, go back to Iraq. If, if I go back, they will kill my daughters. I'm not caring now about myself. I'm not caring about myself, but what about uh, the life of all my daughters? Uh, three in three different, four different displacement uh, uh, happened to Christian uh, since uh, 61 in revolution, Kurdish revolution. We were the first victim because our villages in 61 were completely destroyed by rebellion by uh, Iraqi army, which were uh, founding uh, Kurdish rebellion. But Christian villages were burned, were were looted, were everything. And after in 68, I I remember. I remember how they loot our village, how they, they burn our village. And, and in 70, uh, 75, we were always uh, attacked and bombed by uh, Iraqi army uh, in our villages. And then in 88, I was already a student in France, but my family was still in my village. When you see the, the, the suffering is for both Kurdish and Assyrian and Kaldu Assyrian Syrian people who, who suffer in, in the same way, The main purpose for coming today is to uh, participate in the distribution of food parcels to displaced people. And this is uh, one of the main Christian centers in, uh, in the uh, Nineveh Plain. Rita. Rita. She, she was threatened uh, to, for a child to be kidnapped. They threatened to the kidnap this child? Yes. He was very much in the, in the church near, so he was threatened. Yeah, he was uh, 
And you want Surah to come on? Yes, because I am Christian. And then you like to be a Surah God Muslim. Who like to come on Surah? Because they didn't want Christian and Muslim, and they picked out all all Christian from most of the places. Those who threatened us, they took our house, and they are in our house now. Now, very little aid has been coming into the Nineveh plain. There is some, but you know, very little. Most of it appears to be uh, some emergency humanitarian aid of the sort that we delivered, food parcels for displaced people. This kind of aid, as welcome as it is, is not enough to keep people on their own uh, land as they are facing pressures uh, to leave. بالنسبة للمعمل خلال صاروخ جاوي سنة 2004 بالنسبة للمغزى المشروع كم هدي لي ناشا معيني مجهولين لهوية دي كمها على مدلم زبن المشروبات أبدا When they see subjects who are not corrupted, who are, uh, you know, like a, a doctor, like a, an engineer, like, a, you know, a capacity, what they have to, why they kill him, why they kill so many uh, doctors, because they know they are uh, serving this country. The same thing, when they know uh, that, when they know I, I was representing Christian. مواليد 86 بابي مثل قطيلة شهيد وزيلة مبلجة مع ضباط مثل قام يحكم قطيلة قاود موصل كم مبلجة معه وأخني يتو ميوخ وصرخ نواف يوخ وحالت إني يعني الحمد لله إلى وقع خلنا مثل بره عمالة وخلنا مثل الباقي بزورة لي كله نعم وبطلع قام يحكم قطيلة جمعة كم هدى ليدي أنا بقاوي وزلة بطلع قامح فابش لقطيلة بابي يعني باب دصرة يالي والحمد لله يعني نعم حالتا هذا خلا The situation is bad but I am a very optimist person I see a good future in Iraq and I could see that uh, Christians from the West, they will come back. I'm personally, I was one of the people living in the state. I'm an American citizen, and I came back three years ago. And uh, I am uh, positively 100% uh, sure that Iraq will come back. We have an ancient community that is at real risk we have been a contributor to that risk. And we have a responsibility to help protect that community. And the Christians in Iraq deserve that protection. And I and many others here in the Congress, and this is not a partisan issue, uh, are determined that we are going to do everything we can uh, to give the kind of protection uh, which morality and justice and history requires for that ancient Christian community in Iraq.